Lily and her rangers with the mayor's wife and Ace are ready to go to Las Vegas. Lily wakes the attendant. I see your jeep is busted. Want me to fix it? After checking the jeep briefly, he tells her that it needs a new engine. I see that you already have one. He takes it from us. That'll be $100. Come back when you have the cash. She pulls a billfold from under her waistband and pulls one off to pay the attendant, Rosie snickering again at her heartprint underwear. Thank you. Your jeep is now fixed. Be careful where you drive it. There have been some strange murders in these parts lately. If you see anyone suspicious, report it to the police. Bye. He goes back to sleep. Lily notices that he wears a hat that says, Bug off. Our jeep is here, fixed, and Ace is ready to go. Lily wants to leave Needles right now. We drive to Vegas, but just as we get there, some bandits surprise us, steal our jeep, and leave us stranded. Lily's not surprised. The Las Vegas Library. Lily finds a doctor's manual, but it's in Chinese, and she refuses to use that <laughs> Chinese-English dictionary. Farla finds a book on toaster repair. Lily spots a cleverly laid landmine. Unfortunately, not everyone spots it. Watch out, we're being ambushed. Seven chopters at 14 feet. Varla empties a clip, taking out the last six. We find a scum pit that isn't fit for rats. The building must have been very fancy when it was built a long time ago. The walls and ceilings all around are covered with graffiti and bullet holes. The trash in this room is almost knee deep. Don't wiggle, Rosie. This chair's trying to fall apart. Don't put anything on the table. Couldn't take the weight of a freckle. The walls in this room look like Billy took a sledgehammer and tried to make windows. These old dusty shelves have stood here unused for more years than anyone has been alive. It looks as if the wind is blowing in this room. These desert fuzzies are bouncing all over the place. Ah, fresh air and open spaces once again. Maryland and Tropicana. A small beat up building. A note in the wall says, when you're cool, the sun always shines. Deep in the gloom, Lily sees an old beggar sitting in a pile of rags. Arms for the poor. The old wretch whines. Food, money, bullets, anything you can spare. Lily asks what can be found in Vegas. Give me some cash and I'll tell you something you need to know. Lily gives him a few singles. The old beggar crumples the cash in his fist and stashes them away in his robe. Thanks, he smirks. I don't want to talk too much. I gotta be careful. You never know when one of Fat Freddy's or Farron Brigo's men are around. Lily asks about Fat Freddy. Fat Freddy can always be found at his club over at Vegas and Center. You should never say no to him. He gets very upset. Rumor has it that bird is the word. She asks about Farron Brigo. He's been organizing the defense against the robots. He sent Covenant for help, but he's lost his main man, Max. The boss is moving heaven and earth to find him. The boss doesn't like loose ends. If you're not on his payroll, he may try to bump you off. About Max. Max had something called a sonic key. In fact, he had two. He told me he was going to hide one on the golf course. He went to High Priestess Charmaine for help against the robots, and no one ever saw him again. It sounds like we need to help Farron Briggo find Max, but we likely won't find Briggo until we find Fat Freddy. A small beat-up building. The wind has been blowing dust and leaves into this room so long that it's now almost three feet deep. Either that trash is moving or something is moving under it. Lucky Lily. That snake could have been very nasty if it hung around the fight. Another scum pit not fit for rats. Looks like someone or something has been camping in here. There's a pile of burnt wood in the center of the smoke-blackened room. Ants. Miss Ranger, zillions of them. They're everywhere. Good thing ants don't have poison or Billy'd be in pain for more than just bites. We can hear the sound of many small feet in the darkness around us. Death machines. Two slicer dicers, two chopters, and two sniper droids at 64 feet. Ace takes down the last slicer dicer with the Colt 45. Paradise and Tropicana. Warroids. Four Warroid Mark 1s at 92 feet. Varla's NATO assault spits lead and stitches the last Warroid full of bullets. Lily radios in. No promotion. A hellhole. Ouch. Desert fuzzies hurt when they bounce into Billy. Another scum pit that isn't fit for rats. 
The locals must throw all their trash into this building. The stuff is trying to get out the door. The furniture in this room is only good for firewood. These wood walls are splintering and spitting apart. There used to be a door here a long time ago. Vegas and Tropicana. Vegas and Flamingo. A small beat up building. Scorpions are climbing all over the walls. Don't let them get too close. Watch out, Billy. A scorpion fell on her neck and stung her. Better get to a doctor fast. Sure enough, Billy's been poisoned. I don't even know if there's a doctor in Vegas. Welcome to the Vegas hospital where the rich get well and the poor die young. Billy doesn't trust the doctor. The examination costs $100. You're inflicted with a bug bite. It'll cost $200 to cure it. What a racket. Not only can doctors heal con points, but as you saw here, they can cure diseases such as radiation, wasteland herpes, bug bite, sewer rot, desert dust, and rabies. A tunnel leads into the raceway. There's a party of heavily armed men, six humanoids at 22 feet. Christina's Uzi spits lead, stitching the last scavenger full of bullets. Maryland and Flamingo. Watch out, we're being ambushed. Two thugs at 10 feet. Christina's Uzi is spitting again. Paradise and Flamingo. Vegas and Desert Inn. Step inside Spades Casino, High Roller. Billy shrieks and drags her sister inside. People with money are always welcome here. Inside, we're being checked out very carefully by three casino thugs. The hallway is shabby and well used. It looks more like the entrance to a fort than the legendary Spades Casino. The inside is even more run down than the hallway. The rugs are worn through and the walls need a new coat of paint. Lee stands at the bar hoping to get a drink and waits. And waits. Finally, a pit boss comes over to her. The pit boss sends a stream of brown saliva from between his front teeth to the tip of Lily's boots. He slowly sucks on the tobacco pocketed between his cheek and gum as he continues to eye her. Working a finger into his mouth, he scoots the chew around and finally breaks the silence. Seek Crumb, the manager, he says with a long drawl. We're escorted to Crumb's office. Hi, they call me Crumb, he says with a nod of his head. After he exchanges handshakes with everybody, he tells you, See Farron Brigo, he's my boss. Be sure to use the password Kestrel. As we leave, he yells, Tell him I sent you. We're escorted back to the casino. Come on over and play. You can't win if you don't play. Lily pulls $20 from the squad wad and gives it to Billy, knowing she'll be lucky if it lasts five minutes. Billy sits at the high-low table, barely able to contain her excitement. High-low is a game played with two dice. The player rolls a die, and then the dealer rolls a die. If the player rolled higher than the dealer, he wins. The bet is $10 per roll. Billy rubs noses with her sister and places a bet. Billy rolls a five, and the dealer, a six. You lose. Better luck next time. She pouts, but isn't discouraged. She sits at the three-card money table. Three-card money is played with three cards. One is a queen, and the other are tens. The dealer shuffles the cards and places them face down on the table. The player then has one guess to pick out the queen. The bet is $10. More nose rubbing with Rosie and even Horny gets a super lucky licking before Billy places her last bet. The dealer shuffles and deals three cards face down. Billy picks the middle card. It's a 10. Oops. Sorry. You lose. Billy's lips purse into a frown, but she's quickly distracted by her sister. Only Rosie knows how to cheer her sister up, sticking her tongue out and making silly faces at her. The chandelier looks at as if it's gotten stuck in the center of several gunfights. Lily decides it's time to leave the casino. High rollers are always welcome at Spades Casino. Please come again. A small beat up building. A swarm of insects buzzes towards us. 18 insects at 20 feet. Lily doesn't even want to bother. Can't afford the medical bills. Vegas and center. Fat Freddy's thugs boil out of the building and attack. Three humanoids at two feet. Ace kills the last thug with the 45. Welcome to Fat Freddy's Place, where even low rollers can have a ball. The place is full of gamblers and prostitutes. The office door is heavy oak and closed. When Billy knocks, a voice yells, What's the word? 
Even Billy remembers this one. Bird, she blurts out. The door swings open. An incredibly fat man is waiting to greet us. Fat Freddy is a genetic nightmare. A squamous mass of slimy flesh shuddering and twitching before Lily like some animated blob of flesh-colored jello. He smells like a swamp, a foul, choking miasma of rotting Mastodonian flesh left to putrefy. His presence is overwhelming. Perhaps he has some mutant ability to control men's minds. There's no doubt that he's a leader of men. When he speaks, his voice sounds like bubbles of carbon dioxide bumbling out of a morass. It's difficult to understand him, but after the first few phrases of introduction, Lily begins to get the hang of it. Fat Freddy is a man driven by ambition, and he has an offer to make. Brigo thinks he controls Vegas, bumbles Freddy. But he isn't half the man I am. Laughing. This should be my town, and it will be. I've had you watched since you got to Vegas. They tell me you're the best fighters ever seen in these parts. Well, then it shouldn't be too tough for you to do me a favor. Kill Farron Brigo and bring me the onyx ring he always wears. When you do that, I'll give you $25,000 and anything else you want in this town. Lily tells him that she needs a few minutes to think things over and goes into a corner to confer with Vorla. She has a very strong feeling that Freddy doesn't want to hear any negatives out of her. Vorla adjusts her glasses and agrees. Lily decides to accept, hoping Fat Freddy will help her find Farron Brigo, but she isn't planning on killing the man who might be organizing a defense against the robots. Even if she believed him about the $25,000, it wouldn't buy four or even five stars. Good, good, bubbles the corpulent mobster. Here's $1,000 on account. Enjoy yourselves in the casino. We're escorted back into the casino. Lily radios in. No promotion. Maryland and Desert Inn. A high chain link fence topped with barbed wire surrounds the airport. We're on the airport runway. The only one who's ever seen a working aircraft is Christina. She's beautiful and she glows. One radiation angel at 30 feet. Christina's Uzi spits lead, and the Radiation Angel is stitched full of bullets. Temple of the Servants of the Mushroom Cloud. Lily hopes there's no Temple of Blood in Vegas. Faded posters line the walls. Come forward and show yourselves. Speak the name of the Holy One. Rosie puts her hand over her sister's mouth. The concrete walls glow with a faint blue radiance. Watching us from a corner is an armored camera. Move to your left so I can see you. Lee decides to leave and search for Brigo first. Are they robots or are they men? Two gun droids at 64 feet. Varla empties a clip into the last one, but not before the mayor's wife falls unconscious. Running from warroids, we duck into a small beat up building. This burned out hut is full of insects. A swarm of them buzzes towards us. 16 insects at 10 feet. Rosie reduces the last to a thin red paste with a 9mm. A man dressed in traditional military garb is standing here. One mercenary at 20 feet. Lily triggers and gets him with the M19. The death machines wait in ambush. Their camouflage is nearly perfect. Three combat hackers at 30 feet. Christina discharges an Uzi burst and the last is raked in a crossfire of bullets. A proton axe. This is sure to become Billy's best friend. Someone is shooting at us from cover. Three snipers at 31 feet. Varla triggers at the last with her NATO assault. Back outside, it looks like a tank with an armored warrior. One Scorpatron at 92 feet. We duck into a small beat-up building. What's the word? Before Rosie can mute her sister, Billy blurts out, Bird! What do you think you're trying to do? Get the hell out of here. That Scorpatron is still out here. Thanks, Billy. Boulder and Charleston. We find the jail. We can't open a door, so Lily decides to use TNT. She blows it, but an alarm goes off and alerts some guards. No one but Freddy is supposed to enter that room. Varlow wasn't paying attention. Trap! The floor is charged with 220 volts. Zap! Everybody zapped. Grenades. This is the headquarters for Fat Freddy's goons. They know we're enemies. Three casino guards, 
three thugs and four hired guns at 41 feet. Horny gets a workout as Billy hammers the last hired gun with her new proton axe, reducing him to a thin red paste. The door is marked Danger, prisoners are within. Varla adjusts her glasses, presses the open button, and the concrete slab slowly descends into the floor and opens the cell. Inside is a man chained to the wall. It's Covenant. He's been captured by Fat Freddy. This is Brigo's man. Get me loose, says the prisoner. Varla is able to undo Covenant's chains. Lily lets Ace go. He was good at fixing the jeep, but yeah, we don't have a jeep anymore. Covenant. He must be trying to show off his chest hair or something. Whew, I didn't think I'd ever get out of that one. Thanks. Outside the jail, we see a party of heavily armed men. Ten cyborg commandos at 41 feet. Varla empties a clip, stitching the last cyborg commando full of bullets, but not before the mayor's wife and Covenant fall unconscious. A Kevlar suit for Billy and a sonic key. Back to the small beat-up building. Not you again. You better have the password this time. Lily, while giving Billy a cold stare, gives the password that Crumb told us. Kestrel. He lets us in. The place looks like an old abandoned software development house. The corridor is dark and eerie. Two men guard a door. Do you want to see Mr. Brigo? Who sent you? Lily mentions Crumb. Enter. Mr. Brigo has been expecting you. The door shuts behind us. We see Farron Brigo sitting at his desk with two huge bodyguards nearby. Farron Brigo's office is modest, yet clean and pleasant. Two guards, one tall, blonde, and stern looking, the other shorter and stockier, flank the desk. Brigo, a dark, handsome man, smiles at Lily. I understand you want to speak with me, ladies. Lily asks how the Desert Rangers might help defend against the robots. Once the introductions have been made, the big boss pulls out a box of cigars and passes them around, explaining that it's a special blend grown somewhere further north. Billy takes an extra one. When everyone is comfortable and the bodyguards have taken up unobtrusive positions behind us, he begins to talk. You must be the rangers sent to help. Billy wants to be cautious. She's not sure what he means. One of my men is missing. We don't think he's dead, because he's too valuable to kill. We think some other group in town has grabbed him. If we don't get him back, the whole town will probably be overrun by these damn death machines that have started to appear, because he's the only one in town with the scientific know-how to fight him. He's the one who thought of the landmines, and they've destroyed more robots than anything else in town. Brigo reaches into his desk and brings out a drawing of a rather ordinary-looking man. This is Max, he explains. He came to us about a year ago from the wasteland to the east. He was the greatest hand-to-hand -hand fighter we'd ever seen, and he also seemed to know a lot about the science from before the war. He didn't remember where he came from, at least that's what he told us. I quickly made him my right-hand man. When we began to hear rumors of death machines coming out of the west, and especially when the first of them reached the Vegas borders several weeks ago, Max grew frantic began to talk crazy about how all life was in peril and how only he could save us. He said he needed special equipment and that someone near Vegas should have it. I should have put a guard on him then, but instead I decided to send Ace out to look for help. One night, Max disappeared. I've been looking for him ever since without success. Now I've lost my best man and things are getting worse. Newer and stronger robotic death machines are appearing all the time. If we don't find Max soon, even a fortress like this may not be able to hold up against the death machines. Go see Charmaine in the Mushroom Church. Tell her I sent you, she may be able to help. Lily nods her head, but could use a few leads. There are two other power groups here in Vegas that we know of. Fat Freddy runs the criminal element. He'd like to take over my position. They're also the servants of the Mushroom Cloud, religious fanatics who won't be happy until every person in Vegas has been converted to their own poisonous religion. There may be others. Vegas is a big town. But those are the ones we suspect most. I need you to go find Max. What do you say? Will you do it? The Desert Rangers huddle for a few minutes. Lily decides that taking on this mission would be what Ranger Center would expect. There just better be a hefty promotion in this one. We need to find Max. Lily's pretty sure that Max knows a lot more than he's told Brigo. Lily agrees to Brigo's plan. 
The big boss stands up, shakes our hands, and wishes us all luck. Then he shows us the way out. Marilyn and Sahara. Back to the Temple of the Servants of the Mushroom Cloud. Brico said to find Charmaine. Come forward and show yourselves. Move to your left so I can see you. Speak the name of the Holy One. Billy's learning. Brigo didn't give us a password. Lily drops the name of Charmaine. Did you bring a gift? Lily lies and says yes. What is your gift? Do they want cash? Go away, you vile infidels. A ruby ring? Go away. A bloodstaff? That got their attention. Welcome to our temple. Enter and learn. The side holes are dim and quiet. The north, bright and quiet. Along the west side hall, we hear the sounds of meditation. At the end, a woman who glows with a purple-white radiance. A radiation angel. Down the east side hall, first aid. A doctor stands to greet us. Nuclear first aid. Technical training. The center of holy knowledge. Varla finds a book about energy weapons, which includes such things as laser pistols, ion beamers, and meson cannons. Lily radios in. No promotion. Varla also finds another book about lock bumping and tumblers. The main hole is locked. Locked holes make Lily's job <laughs> difficult. Lily sets TNT. The door is all over the place in little pieces. The walls of the reactor core are hot to the touch. The temple is a nuclear reactor. Another high security door or TNT. Loud chanting of many different mantras rolls forth from the room in front of us. We could make out what they were saying if we moved closer. Come forward and show yourselves. We approach cautiously. Stop there. Do not come any closer, Charmaine demands. Even though she's glowing purple, she's got to be the most beautiful woman Lily has ever seen. Do you seek the great glow? Lily does, hoping it doesn't mean we're going to be dipped in the reactor. Who sent you? Lily mentions Brigo. Farron must have sent you to look for Max. Last I knew, he was headed for the sewers. He built a special key to get down there. It's called the Sonic Key. Don't confuse it with the four keys of the Citadel. Max made a couple of them and told me that he was hiding one somewhere in the old golf course. Didn't tell me where, though. Didn't do him any good, either. The new men grabbed him before he could do anything. If you return to me the blood staff from the Mushroom Church and Needles, I can show you the way. Tell the Bishop Dipstick. We have the Sonic Key. His Holiness in Needles has the blood staff. This sounds simple enough. Get off that table. You don't sit on tables at home, do you? Rosie. Everyone, including the Mayor's wife and Covenant, make the trek on foot back to Needles, following the river south. We reach the servants of the Mushroom Cloud Church and speak with His Holiness. What can I do for you, my child? Lily gives him the password, Dipstick. He gives us the real blood staff, saying, please be careful with it. After trading at Leroy's, we make the return trip to Las Vegas to the Temple of the Servants of the Mushroom Cloud. Let me see the blood staff, says Charmaine. Lily offers it to her. Charmaine takes the blood staff from Lily and her face lights up. Lily clears her throat, waiting for Charmaine to fulfill her end of the bargain. Ah, yes, Max, she croons. That strange flunky for Farron Brigo. You probably don't know that he's a robot. That is a surprise. She inserts the blood staff into a secret compartment and turns it. We hear a low groan as if some new doors were opening up. The way is now clear for you, says Charmaine. If you survive your encounter with the new men, look me up in a couple of months. I might have another mission for you. So Max is a robot, and he's been kidnapped by the new men, as Charmaine calls them. More high security doors, more TNT. Massive electronic equipment hums and clicks all around. A sign drops from the ceiling. It reads, This Way Out. We enter the sewers beneath Las Vegas. The darkness is thick like a cloak and hides many horrors. Varla missed it while adjusting her glasses. A deadfall trap is sprung as Billy passes through. A mutant cyborg prepares to zap us. One cyborg at 28 feet. Billy fires the killing blow with the M19. 
A metal rustling echoes from the darkness. One bullet Tron Stricter at 22 feet. Covenant launches a law rocket shell and drills an opening into it, reducing it into an Undertaker's nightmare. A cool breeze sweeps silently through the blackness and chills Lily to the bone. A mutant cyborg prepares to zap us. One turbo cyber trike at 14 feet. Horny gets busy as Billy pummels it into a thin red paste with the proton axe. A power converter. We come to a torpid river of raw sewage from the city of Vegas above. We need to cross. The current, though slow, is fairly strong. The sewage river pulls us off our feet and sweeps us downriver. A section flows beneath the wall and we're sucked under the water and beneath the wall getting bashed against the bottom. We're caught by the river's current. There goes Vegas. There goes Needles. There goes Quartz. Finally, we wade out of the rushing water by a bridge. The only one conscious is Billy, and everybody has sewer rot. Dr. Quack's Emergency Clinic in Quartz. $210 worth of examinations and $4,900 worth of treatment. Wow! Back to Las Vegas, the temple of the servants of the Mushroom Cloud, and into the sewers. This time, Lily wants Rosie to set a rope. The rope catches on debris across the stream and holds solidly. It will make our passage safer. Sluggish water swirls around Lily's legs. It stinks and is slippery, but the rope helps her wade across. As she wades, the stream bed shifts beneath her feet, but the rope keeps her up. She feels creatures slither between her legs. The water is thick and cold. Its slimy touch chills Lily. We make it across, and this time, everyone's conscious and sewer rot free. A lupine howl echoes through the darkness and comes at us from all sides. Varla feels surrounded and uneasy. The solitary sound of water drops falling into puddles mocks our slow progress. Sewer water has collected here and formed a dark, forbidding pool that is quite still. We hear something splashing through the murky water. Three tronodiles at 22 feet. Horny shakes it as Billy batters the last into a thin red paste with the proton axe. A fusion cell. Varla disarms a trap. Sort of. We find a small mound of strange things collected here. A hand mirror. Lily decides we need to commandeer more supplies from the temple. More high security doors means more TNT. Tack Nook Manufacturing. Electrical generators. Lily unlocks another room with TNT. Billy touched some exposed components. Rosie laughs at her. The mayor's wife has stepped on some bare wires and falls mortally wounded. Good thing the nuclear first aid office is here. Billy radios in. No promotion. More doors, more TNT. Bad suits for the mayor's wife and Covenant. Okay, back to the sewers. Footsteps of a creature echo off the walls. Still, the creature is hard to see. One tassel at 30 feet. Varla's NATO assault lets fly and the tassel is filled full of lead. A servo motor. The wall sounds hollow here. Horny wags his tail as Billy works her pickaxe. The wall shifts and crumbles, leaving a hole large enough for us to get through. Billy tunnels us to the other side. A solitary figure made of tungsten fibers and armor plates laughing hauntingly and shooting at us. One cyborg at 60 feet. Billy reduces it to an undertaker's nightmare with the proton axe, but not before Varla falls unconscious. A laser pistol that utilizes power packs. Lily's new toy. Varla disarms another trap. Sort of. A small, six-armed robot with a squat humanoid head on top whirls in our direction and raises its weapons. One Hexborg at 54 feet. Christina's on top of it, emptying a clip, filling it full of lead, but not before Varla and Covenant fall unconscious. A laser car run and more power packs. Lily upgrades. A Kevlar suit for Covenant. Varla disarms more traps, sort of. From the shadows, a group of half-men and cyborgs attack. Two new and improved Centrons and one Claw Man at 30 feet. Varla burns a clip into the last new and improved Centron, stitching it full of bullets. We stumble across a small pile of valuable trash. Power packs. Whoever owned this stuff booby-trapped it and we sprung it. The roof collapses with a bang. Varla. 
Farla disarms yet more traps, sort of, and yet more still, sort of. Back in the shadows, we can hear the urgent whispered orders of cyborg attackers, one claw leader and two clawmen at 41 feet. Farla burns a clip into the claw leader, stitching it full of bullets. Several crudely sharpened steel rods shoot out from a cunningly laid trap. Christina and the mayor's wife get a taste. Orla. A lone cyborg chuckles and smiles an evil metallic grin. He attacks. One cyborg at 10 feet. Billy wallops him with the proton axe, reducing it into ground round. A servo motor. A silvery mountain of reptilian terror cocks its head, studies us for a moment, then attacks. One Tronosaurus at 36 feet. Lily fires bright energy streams from her new laser car line, boring a hole of death through the Tronosaurus. A ROM board and a Kevlar suit for Varla. A metal door here is thick, and the word LAB is painted in bold letters in the center of it. Lily remembers she has the sonic key, and it unlocks the door. In this lab area, most of the equipment is broken. Still, along the wall, some equipment looks functional. Another ROM board. Varla adjusts her glasses and inspects the equipment along the wall and determines we still need more parts. Billy gets to work on the north wall with her pickaxe, tunneling across the underground river. Varla disarms a trap, sort of. Although cleaner than the first section of the sewer, this area is still refuse strewn and forbidding. An android head. Lily decides to search for even more parts in a previously unexplored section of the sewers to the west. There's a wide chasm ahead. Looks like we could secure a rope here, then cross. Rosie throws out a rope, but when we try to cross, we smash into the walls of the chasm and get fairly beat up in the process. Yes, everybody falls into the chasm. The handholds are only suitable for one person at a time to climb out safely. Billy goes first. Climb is difficult and nervous. Sweat coats her hands. She has to use a rope to scale the rest of the ledge. Lily goes second. Like Billy, she has to use a rope to scale the rest. Farla follows using rope. Rosie does it without rope. Christina tries but slips a few times before doing it, also without rope. The mayor's wife. She keeps slipping but has no rope. Covenant grows impatient and goes ahead of her. He slips himself, but scales the ledge nonetheless. Everybody's wondering if the mayor's wife can do it. She can, but it takes a while. Lily's hoping we don't have to return the way we came. A wolfish howl crackles into synthesized static as cyberwolves scramble from their lair and attack. Two cyclones at 28 feet. Billy batters the last with the proton axe, reducing it into a thin red paste. Lily radios in. She's promoted to Corporal. Another ROM board. Back at the center of holy knowledge, Rosie finds a book on the history of the automatic Kalishnikov rifle. Lily finds a book on energy weapons and a doctor's manual. Christina finds a book on anti-tank weapons. The mayor's wife grabs a pro wrestling magazine. Lily radios in. No promotion. Back at the lab, Varla adjusts her glasses and inspects the equipment along the wall. First android assembly unit. Diagnosis, repairs cannot proceed without a head unit. Varla clicks the android head into place. A unit control function board needs to be replaced. Varla installs a new ROM board. It slides easily into its bracket. Repairs to this unit are complete and successful, but the operation of this unit is impossible until all assembly operations are complete. Second Android Assembly Unit. Diagnosis? Power Source Missing. Varla installs a new fusion cell. It screws into place easily. The old power converter sparks and smokes. Varla replaces it with the new one. It hums. The central servo motor was damaged by the old power board. It needs replacing to drive the whole unit. Varla installs a new servo motor. It slides into place with a click. A unit control function board needs to be replaced. Varla installs a new ROM board. It slides easily into its bracket. Repairs to this unit are complete and successful. All repairs needed at this station are complete. Third Android assembly unit. Diagnosis? Servo motor functions impaired. The left shoulder assembly really needs an overhaul. 
Varlet installed a new servo motor. It slides into place with a click. Repairs to this unit are complete and successful. All repairs needed at this station are complete. Lily's really starting to wonder how long this is going to take. Fourth Android Assembly Unit. Diagnosis? Servo motor functions impaired. The left knee assembly is a mess. Varlet installs a new servo motor. It slides into place with a click. The right hip obviously needs some work. Varlet installs another servo motor. It too slides into place with a click. Repairs to this unit are complete and successful. All repairs needed at this station are complete. Varlet returns to the first android assembly unit and preps for assembly. Rosie gasps. The android awakens. Max reaches up and gives his head a bit of a twist. Lily hears a click and the android smiles. I came down here to negotiate a peace with the cyborgs and what do they do? They rip me up and start using me for spare parts. Ingrates. He stretches and stands. I have to get back up to Vegas and help prepare for the next assault, but I've got a mission of great importance for you. Head northeast from here and across the bridge, you'll find a hidden base. It is a journey you must succeed at. There, you'll find lost technology and information that you can use to stop Cochise before it's too late. A secret passage slides open in the room's south wall. At the same time, a blast-proof security door slides down in front of the entrance to the room. It short-circuits, preventing exit. Go through the secret passage to get out of here. One thing, Max adds, it is possible you'll need to recover some equipment from Project Darwin before you can complete the rebuilding of the sleeper base. Be careful, though, and rebuild as much of the base as you can before you venture off to Darwin. I don't like the things I've heard about it at all. We exit the Las Vegas sewers through the secret passage and find ourselves outside the city. What's in Lily's report so far? Sometimes Billy just doesn't know when to keep quiet. Those mushroom people? They really like that blood staff. Fat Freddy was trying to rule Vegas, and Farron Briggo was organizing the defense against the robots. And the key to that defense was Max. We need to find the sleeper base and Project Darwin and stop Cochise.